whether you see more patients or you see less patients, it doesn't matter. That same amount of profit has to go back to that private equity firm. It got to come from somewhere. And the process is you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, squeeze the and doctor. Squeeze. Whatever it is, they get in their money. Somebody getting squoze. <laughs> <laughs> Spell that, Alfred. Squoze? This episode is brought to you by Set for Life Insurance. Listen, docs. One of the first steps we took to pay off our student loan debt was realizing we paid way too much for our disability insurance. That all changed when we found Set for Life Insurance. They helped us with a customized insurance policy that met our needs and most of all, budget. To learn more, check out setforlifeinsurance.com. Did you know Locum's docs make, on average, 33% more than employed docs? Got your attention now? So, if you're considering locum tenants, either full-time or on the side, you probably have a question or two, or maybe even 20. Locumstory.com is packed with unbiased information and tools to see what the trends are in your specialty and even make a decision if locums is right for you. My advice, make locumstory.com the go-to place to learn more about locum tenants. That's locumstory.com. All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Docs Outside the Box. I am your host, Dr. Nee, joined by Dr. Renee. Dr. Renee and Dr. Nee are really tired, mainly <laughs> uh, for a whole host of reasons. But for me, I'm post post call. Um, I just got off of a night shift stint um, an hour and a half away working doing trauma call. I prefer to do night shifts. And I just it's still even Welcome with that, it's, take, it's taken me a while to to kind of get back to where get into the groove yeah it just get takes a while the group, it just takes a while you got to prove your love to you, me yeah, yeah some of that madonna stuff i just anyway but we're here we got a lot to talk about um and we also got invited to the white house we did yeah after the lsu iowa game <laughs> They're inviting, everybody got they're invited. They're inviting to the White everybody. House. They just say, "Hey, Doctor Nee, Doc's outside the box." Listen, y'all got a really average kind of podcast. Why don't you come to the White House also? <laughs> you are coming to the White House. Oh, but... You are coming to the White House. Yeah. You are coming to the White House. Everybody's coming to the White House. I don't know if this is good for for women's basketball or bad. Either way, it's just. <laughs> It is At a, least it's in the news. It's a lot of gossip. A lot of, not gossip, it's a lot of like bad press, but we're not here for that. We can get on another episode and well, talk about that. Well, congratulations to LSU. Congratulations to LSU. That was a great. And LSU alone. A great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have some of your users, the, the listeners coming after us. Like, don't be giving. <laughs> but y'all, this is episode 353. <laughs> We tired. We post call, uh, which is going to make for an even better episode. Is it? And listen, shout out to everyone who's listening on the podcast for the audio version. Oh, we appreciate God. you. But also at the same time, listen, y'all need to go and check us out on YouTube, right? Subscribe. Right? Because <laughs> the work that Alfred has been doing on YouTube is y'all, phenomenal. Y'all don't we know are, what y'all missing. You guys are missing a really great experience. Even if you're just going to even if you're just going to put it on YouTube and just kind of do the dishes or do whatever you need to do, like just the video visual cues are really amazing. Yeah. And um shout out to you. Shout out to you Alfred. You've been doing a great job. Absolutely. And um you know, shout out for us for making a great show too. I can't give you all the credit out there. <laughs> 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 Episode 353, let's jump into this. So on this episode we're going to talk about we're going to talk about uh, Doctors for Hire, which is our video series that mm-hmm. we are finally releasing. That is a collaboration between us, Darko Media Group, and LocumStory.com. Yes. Yes. We're also going to be talking about Donald Glover, one of my favorite uh, producers. <laughs> this is my America. This is my North Star right here. Really? When I don't know what to do, I always look at this picture right here. See? Really? Once again, audio listeners, you are missing out. If you are watching on YouTube, you know exactly which picture I'm talking about. Okay. You know what? You you better be real careful about um, using celebrities for your North Star. I know, right? You got they uh, always disappoint. They always disappoint. So That's I'm true. not saying nothing about Donald Glover. Your, your North Star was Will Smith up to a certain point. Remember? What are you talking about? Yeah, you're like, Bro, I, are you I adore always him. saying stuff He's that's amazing. not true. And him and Jada Pinkett is just amazing. Their love is that's the type of love that I want. Remember that before really? we got married, you're like, that's the type of love that I want. Really, me? Really, mm-hmm. man? You was a lie. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, me. Mm-hmm. And wow, then third, third, we're going to do a little bit of something of, you guys remember Romper Room? Um, for Renee, it was great. 
for Dr. Nee, it was horrible. But we're going to talk a little bit about Romper Room <laughs> and how as we want to do why. shout outs. That's the why. <laughs> and then we're going to get into woof, big money and how uh, one of the uh, really main healthcare staffing companies right now is financially struggling. I just found this out on Twitter, actually, maybe like a couple hours ago. Uh We we need to talk about this. Okay. Let's jump into this. Let's start about, uh, let's talk about our video series that's coming out. It's called Doctors for Hire. Mm -hmm. It is, or Docs for Hire, excuse me. No, it's called Doctors for Hire. You don't even know the name of the thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube, guys. The links are below. If you're watching on YouTube, the links are in the show notes if you were listening on the audio podcast. But this is our first foray into <laughs> a video series. You all kinds of wrong me. I know, but listen. <laughs> no. Is wait, it not on YouTube? Not yet. It's going to be on April 24th. Oh, okay. Well, this episode is not coming out April 24th. Okay. <laughs> you should make it come out on April 24th. It is coming out on April 24th, but this episode that we're recording right now is not coming out on April 24th. It's coming out before that. So the links are not going to be in the show notes. Is that bad? That's that's the way it is. But, but part, of it is because, part of it is because I'm tired. That's what it is. Well, that's what it is. But, but, night sh- but I can't tell between day and night. So but the link for the trailer will be in the show notes. Yes. And we've already released a portion of that on Instagram. Yes. So make sure you go and check that out. Yeah. So, Alfred, you may want to make that our uh, our breaky break. What do you mean? The trailer. Just make the trailer the break. What are you talking about? Like when we get when we go to commercial break. So we we are see you can't confuse him though. Like that, I'm the one who says we going on break and stuff and all that. Like I got that relationship with I, Alfred. It, listen, oh so, my God, here we go again. You think you Batman? Yeah. Okay, put but some anyway, ears on him, Alfred. But anyway, listen, let's 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 keep it focused because we're going all over the place. Stay stay focused stay a little focused. bit, okay? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm in charge of the show because you all over the place. Mm-hmm. Stay okay. focused, mm-hmm. all right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we collaborated with Locum Story since yep. last year, creating a series that basically is documenting what it's like for you to get back into kind of locums mm-hmm. on, a more, con- a, on a more consistent basis. So um, for those who don't know, um, over the last what, four to five years, Renee has been part-time um, and a little bit less than part-time working locums and working some per diem jobs here and there just to maintain her board certification, but mainly being a stay-at-home OB, right? Stay at you home. Want, you want to describe that a little bit more? I stay at home. <laughs> I stay at home, take care of my kids. That's pretty true. So, well, part of, you know, part of but it, But you're supposed though, to take care of your kids, though. Well, okay, but nobody said that I wasn't. <laughs> anyway, I'm not looking for props for that. But, um, yeah, so what was happening over the last few years was that I was pregnant twice, right? Had two infants that I was I'm the home. father, guys. I'm the father. <laughs> I was Just, home. Know, yes, people be asking. Anyway, <laughs> oh my God, me. <laughs> I'm postcard. Keep going. By law, you would have been the father anyway. <laughs> Shout out to Paternity Court, Lauren Lake. Um, She's saying that because I signed the birth certificates. You don't have to sign the birth certificates. By law, you would be the father because we're married. Oh. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> so for those of y'all, if anybody knows the best there paternity tests out there, text us at 833-230-2860. Give me a paternity anyway. test. in the middle of the night, swab them cheeks. <laughs> anyway. Where did we go with this show? Come I on. don't know. Anyway, that's what was happening. So, um, pregnant twice, two infants, breastfeeding consistently, um, and then decided to just kind of be home with them even through, you know, their toddler years. um, Because, you know, those are pretty important, I think, important enough years where they rely on you a lot more than they will when they're older. And so I didn't want to miss out on that. So... Um, But now getting back into locums and being more consistent. Well, the other thing, too, is we paid a bunch of debt off. Yes. So that pressure to be like, yo, we got a lot of debt. You ain't got time to be at home. Take your ass to work. Right. That wasn't there anymore. It was just like, okay, well, if that's what you want and we can sustain it. Because at one point, guys, just so y'all know, like we were living off of Renee's half time, part time salary. Mm -hmm. And then we used my full time salary to pay off debt. So if we could live off of just my salary and not you not bringing anything at all except for you know some weekend call here and there mm-hmm. at, you know after a while you know i think we'd be fine particularly since we got the debt out of the way so. yeah so we finally got the debt out of the way i think when our son turned our older son turned um seven months yeah that was when we finally got all the debt out of the way 
Um, but even, you know, even with that, you know, I was still able to stay home, even though we had just a little bit of debt left when he was born. And so it just, you know, got much better um, once we paid the debt off and we were able to save and invest a little bit more. But then, you know, other things happened. We got diverted a little bit. I think you mentioned that on the last episode. Yeah, I told people it wasn't. And you said it was, it was none, none, of, none of their business. None of your business. <laughs> I mean. But anyway, you got back. At, you getting back. But into I'm getting the, back into yeah. the locums game. I'm getting back into locums game. And you know what I think is very interesting about this is that there are a lot of shows that show what doctors do. Right, like yeah, they go to work. And they all go that. to work. You know what they do, how they interact with patients. Um, you know just what their day is like, but. There aren't many shows that show how we get to where we get, right? Like there isn't a show that necessarily shows like, why does this doc- this doctor get a job? You know what I mean? Like what does it take for a doctor to get a job? What does a doctor look for? What do they have to do? And so this gives like, a, a, I think a glimpse anyway of what a doctor has to do in order to look for a job. And I think that that'll be, you know, pretty interesting I think we didn't we didn't want to do a typical doctor show. Right. That's what it was. We didn't want to do a typical doctor show yeah. because we're more yeah. than just doctors. So there's a you know, there was one point when me and Renee were talking prior to videoing this and I was saying, like, I'm really bored with what we're doing. Like there's no major challenges of what's going on. I feel like we're very traditional. And then we actually had to we had a talk where she was like, Look, like, we're not employed. We've been doing locums for close to six years now, seven years now. You know, we pay our own taxes, we get our own health insurance. Um, there are times where, you know, after three months, you don't know exactly where you're going to be working. You make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, that's very non-traditional. Yeah. And after a while, you start to think about it. You're like, well, actually, our lives is the part that is interesting, mm-hmm. not just what we do in the hospital. Right. And I think that's why we decided to showcase this to show other people that, yeah, like, if you're going to get something from Docs Outside the Box or people who create Docs Outside the Box, then we have to give you a video series that is actually outside of the box. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so that's that was the deciding factor. That was ain't no Docs thing. Inside the Box. Or this ain't like, <laughs> you know, like what's the one? The one that's on Bravo with the real, what is it? Medicine and. Oh, Married to Medicine. Married to Medicine. Like <laughs> that's a little bit different. That's you know? definitely outside the box. <laughs> I don't know if we at that level. We, we no, not at that I don't level, think but. we're ever going to be at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because that that's yeah, that's a different type of show. But um, but yeah, no, this this was more just kind of showing, you know, what we do as doctors, but not necessarily involving patients and yeah. how we interact with patients or, you know, how we even interact with, you know, medicine, you know, practicing medicine um, in general. Right. Cause everybody knows I deliver a baby, you know, um, or I deliver babies. And there have been shows that show like, OK, this is what OBGYNs do. And those shows are great. Absolutely great. Um, But how do you get to the point where you're working at that hospital? You know, what are the things that you have to consider? So I think this is going to be pretty interesting. Um, And, you know, we're hoping to expand on that a little bit more. I'll expand and just say that you don't necessarily get to see people having a discussion. Like you feel like that one person is having a discussion. That one doctor is having a discussion with a hospital, having a discussion with a private practice firm or a private practice uh, clinic and then that discussion is assumed to be happening in a vacuum like that Mm -hmm. discussion only occurs whether you're going to take it between you and that entity right but what we're trying to say is that there's way more yeah other considerations considerations like what about our lives me and you together what do i think about it Mm -hmm. what does that mean for our children Um, you know, and there's like some surprises in this that I think people are going to, at least I was shocked about it when we were filming it. Yeah. And there's some going to be some surprises to, to some people because some people are like, well, how, how much more interesting can it be? It's like, oh, it could be really interesting, mm-hmm. right? It could be very interesting as mm-hmm. to where you're going to work, what type of job you're going to take, how much you're going to get paid. All of those different things make a, make this a very interesting yeah. video series that I think people want to pay attention yeah. to. I think definitely if you are looking for a job right now, if you're considering leaving your job, right now if you can't stand your partners uh, <laughs> <laughs> why do you always go there it's just true there's a lot of people right now who can't stand their partners they don't know if they should leave um, but if you're in that boat or if, <laughs> if let's say you are a in medical school or a resident <laughs> and you want to know the type of factors that you should use when asking jobs mm-hmm. like this is a series that you need to be watching yeah because that doesn't get covered 
Right. Right. It's just how much you gonna pay me, and then I'm gonna start working, and then that's it. And yeah. it's never the yeah. details that we get into. So, yeah. so yeah. what what do you want the audience to gain from this? What do you think they will gain from this? Um, I think the audience. Um, I'd like for the audience to just kind of gain that kind of like what you said, right? When you're making a decision as to where you're going to work, that it's not just your decision, right? It's it's unless you're single. Well, unless you're single, right? And and even sometimes depending on your situation, right? If you have, you know, parents, you know, that you're either taking care of or, you know, you just have very close family. Um that you know, taking a job affects different parts of your life. Right. It's not just, oh, this is where I'm just going to work. I mean, it, it might mean that you have to move somewhere or that the time that you're going to be taking for this job is going to be different, you know, than the time that you had before. Right. It's going to affect your relationships in some way, shape or form. So when you're thinking about getting a job, don't just think about, well, how much money am I going to get? You need to really be thinking about how is this going to affect my life? Because at the end of the day, listen, the paycheck is the paycheck. Like the money is going to come. Right. It's whether or not it's worth it to take that money. Yeah. That's what you need to be thinking about. Is it worth it to take that money is it worth it for me to change my life enough for me to take this money from this job? But it, it, let's go deeper because I think some people, they don't get that, right? And, mm -hmm. I, and I think it's fair enough. They're like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm just going to take a job. It sounds good. And I'm going to go and work there. And sometimes, you know, I may have to travel or let's say I like, – because in med school or if you're trying to get into med school, it – I'd have to say more often than not, you're going to have to go and travel away mm -hmm. to be in med mm -hmm. school, which is less than ideal. Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, you choose, you know, like the Ivy League type of medical schools or, you know, the really top, 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 you know, notch type schools and stuff. More than likely, you may have to travel. Right. Mm -hmm. or, or if you're traveling, it's because you were going to that that previous scenario that I was talking mm -hmm. about. Residency, that decision isn't up to you. We just finished talking about the match. Mm -hmm. It's based off of a computer system. Right. And now you're saying going to take a job, you know, like. So you're, what I you're saying is like, what's the difference? You've already traveled for. Right. You've, you've already been in a situation where you're going to have to get used to kind of not doing things on your own terms. Wow. What is it that what is it specifically this video you think could teach people about that whole mindset? I think that. And I've said this before, and I think, you know, we have a we have a reel actually on Instagram um, where I'm talking to Mandy Money. And the difference here is that when you are looking for your own job outside of residency, you've done with your residency or you're well into your career, the difference is that your time should be your own. You should be working on your own time, right? When you're, you know, getting into medical school, when you're getting into residency, you are working on someone else's time. Someone else is telling you like, okay, I'm going to give you this opportunity. Here is the opportunity. But now that you are the physician and you are able to decide where you want to work, you best believe that you are an opportunity for that facility. And you get to choose where you want to go. There's no algorithm anymore, right? There's no, you know, match program anymore. There's no soap. This is you deciding what you want to do. And you have to start looking at yourself as someone who is very valuable, that you're bringing value to the table and that you can, you know, you should basically you shouldn't look at every job opening as an opportunity. It only becomes an opportunity when it works for you. Yeah. That's when it becomes an opportunity. I like, that. I like the way how you describe that. So this is a different series where if you're watching this, guys, like this is a series where, you know, we're what we're taking it from the standpoint of we have leverage. Mm -hmm. We She knows what she wants and what she doesn't want. And I don't think there's any time when you're watching this where you'll get a sense of a scarcity mindset. I'm not saying that we're coming into this or she's coming into this pompous, pompous, um, but it's just kind of like, look, like this is what I want. This is what I don't want. And right. if it doesn't work, then we just kind of move on to something else. Exactly. And go from there. Um, you know, I, I forgot what the next question I was going to ask. <laughs> but um, what I want to know is, is this relationship that we did with Locum Story. Mm hmm. Why Locum Story? Let's talk more about that. What yeah. what what is it specifically that makes that thing special? 
So I think with Locum Story, what I like about Locum Story is that it literally is just a repository of information, right? Like they're not selling anything. They're not, you know, trying to, oh, you know, I want you to do this. They're literally just trying to put information out there. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about, you know, Locum Story is that they share a lot of different stories of doctors who are doing Locum. So you can see like how basically... um, being a locums runs the gamut of, you know, of just lifestyles, right? Like how different people can have different lifestyles um, with locums. And then the other thing is that they also have contacts or they they work with um, different different locums agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, who are affiliates of theirs. And so they do a lot of comparisons, um, you know, of those companies based on kind of um, what the what the companies have to offer in within sp- different specialties, um, you know, by, you know, maybe by um, compensation and, and other things. And we, we showed that on a video. Like yeah. Renee went through Locum Story and then she got introduced to different companies mm-hmm. from that standpoint and had the interviews. Yeah. We cut it to make it a lot more digestible and right. interesting for people and stuff. But literally, like, she was interviewing with all of these different companies, mm-hmm. and they all had different strengths. I like locumstory.com mainly because I get to see what company A is paying versus what company B mm-hmm. is paying. Um, you get a whole bunch of different information that you may not necessarily right. um, want to, you know, need to know, or you think you need to know, excuse me, um, like taxes, what to do, mm-hmm. um, you know, just, you know, how people are living their lives differently. Yeah. As a matter of fact, last year, we did multiple interviews with different doctors Mm -hmm. who worked, you know, with companies that are represented by, you know, locumstory.com. Yeah. And we just interviewed their lives. I mean, like we had uh, Dr. Trevor Cabrera. Dr. Mm -hmm. Cabrera, who was the pediatrician who basically lived and went from hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel. When he finished his stints, his, you know, working for a certain amount of weeks, Mm -hmm. it would be literally he would go to his next job. Right. Because he didn't have another place to stay. Right. Which doesn't suit everyone, but it suited him really yeah. well. He's yeah. paying off his loans at a no joke rate. So right, he's a pediatrician that's making ortho money. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he's making orthopedic <laughs> surgery money, and he's he's literally a pediatrician who does not have any specialized training. Right, he's he's not. Right. He, he's has, just he didn't a do any general fellowship. pediatrician. Yeah. So yeah. It, and it works for him. So right, so right. I, you know I'm gonna mess it up. So once again, tell people where they can find this. When it's coming out, because <laughs> so, you don't mess it up. It's going to be coming out April 24th, and it'll be on the Docs Outside the Box podcast YouTube channel. And um, we're going to be dripping it out, you know, also on social media as well. Um, so kind of like the shorts and things like that. We'll be um, doing that as well. But if you want to watch the entire series, right, because we're going to be releasing the entire series, um, on YouTube all and, at once. And HBO Max. <laughs> and HBO Max. HBO Max. Y'all going to be releasing this? Yeah, we got stuff with Issa Rae, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, <laughs> she, right. She and put, Donald Glover. Yeah, they they, they, yeah. they, they, yeah, they got us on. Yeah, yeah. they got us on. Mm-hmm. They put us on. This, that's why you're a North Star. Mm-hmm. Okay. The White House is going to be putting it out. That's right. Uh, none of that is true. The only thing that is true is that it will be coming out on our YouTube channel. So Docs Outside the Box podcast YouTube channel. Um on April 24th. So we're excited for you guys to, you know, tell us what you think. Six months um, of work. Yeah. Six months of work, guys, yeah. to put this together. It's more than just a sponsorship type of relationship. It is putting together a a storyline, a mm-hmm. storyboard, yeah. videoing it. You know, as you will see from this, I'm not the greatest actor. You can see. Actor. Right? You yeah. weren't acting. Either that. I'm not great on camera. <laughs> Right, I'm not great. Okay, what were you acting about? You come off way more natural than I do, on that series. Okay. Yeah. So, but you have an acting background. I don't have an acting background. Don't you? No, I acted in college. What'd you do? But that's not an acting. You did like Romeo and Juliet or something. I didn't do no Romeo and Juliet. Stella. No, I did. I did the lesson. I don't know none of my. I did the lesson. What is that? The lesson is uh, it's a play. Um, so it's a play about a student who goes over. I mean, it's not over. Dream Girls. I don't know what what you're talking about. So. Okay, it wasn't Dream Girls. They don't do Dream Girls in college. I don't know. <laughs> they don't maybe do Mama. I want you. They don't do Mama. I want to sing. <laughs> they don't do it in college. Maybe Mama, I want to sing. Um, no, the lesson. The lesson is a story about a student who goes to her professor's home. I keep it quick too. Hurry up. I am, but you keep talking. 
Okay, you ready? Go ahead. The student goes to this professor's home so that the student can get a lesson from the professor. And the professor is kind of nuts and crazy, uh, but the student is also extremely annoying. And so the student annoys the professor to the point where he basically kills her. <laughs> he kills her and he, like, puts her away. And at the end, you hear a knock on the door. He opens the door. It's another student coming for a lesson. <laughs> this is a short story? It's a play. Oh. Yeah, it's a play. Sounds like it could be like a Netflix special. <laughs> it probably could be. Mm. Speaking of. Speaking of. So everybody, make sure you check that out. All of the links will be in the show notes or yeah. in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, let us know what you think, good, bad, or otherwise. Seriously, guys, like you're not going to hurt our feelings. And I also want to give a shout out to Kid Hollywood Productions, um, who is our video production um, team. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and take a break. We will be back next with Donald Glover. Mm -hmm. Backdrop. 2012, finishing my fellowship in Miami and no decision bigger than where and how I was going to start working on my own. And there it was, the fork in the road. Being employed versus something I had never heard of before, locum tenants. So I decided to go the locums route, and I had a ton of questions then. I stumbled a bit, but eventually I was able to stand on my own, and I have been working locums over the past 10 years. Now what about you? If you're considering locums, you probably have hella questions just like I did. Like, who covers my malpractice? Do I really have control over how often I work? And what are the tax implications? Now, lucky for you, locumstory.com has the answers you need. It's packed with unbiased information and advice from docs just like you. And there's nothing to sell here. It's just a simple resource for information, like finding out what's the average pay rate for your specialty. There's even a quiz to see if locums is right for you. So listen, take my advice. Locumstory.com is the perfect place to start if you want to learn more about locums. That's locumstory.com. Yo, we are back. Let's talk about Donald Glover, yes. one of my favorite content producers, one of my favorite. Yo, there's pre Don there's pre Atlanta and then there's after Atlanta. So post Donald Atlanta. Well, you, whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> After Atlanta, post Atlanta, it don't matter. Atlanta was like that. So Donald Glover, some of y'all may know him as Childish Gambino. Some of, of y'all may know him from the show Community. Some of y'all may have known him as a writer on 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. um, but yo, my man is dope. I was reading a GQ Yeah, he was article. a writer on 30 Rock? Yeah, he was still in, he was still in college. NYU. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, he's pretty young to be, have been a writer. He's 39. Yeah, yeah still pretty yeah. young. I didn't even know, like, to be honest with you, like, some of those shows I didn't even know. Like, like when they were on, like, yeah. like 30, I didn't watch 30, 30 Rock, Rock. I was like, but, what's 30 Rock? Yeah, and then I didn't someone really had to tell me what 30 Rock. Rock. I was like, what, what, really? Yeah. I guess I was in my, I was in school or residency. I wasn't yeah. that. And then, um, so he did that, and then he did Community, and then he did some other things, and then, you know, afterwards, he got a chance to do Atlanta. Yeah. And changed the game on just dark comedy, I yeah. think, in general. Changed the game on dark comedy. And then from there, things just started accelerating for him. And, you know, obviously now he's a got music the music career. Music career, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And now he has that show called Swarm yeah. um, on Amazon, yep. which is really good. Um, ending was kind of, but I think that show came to as close to me as perfection. As possible, the ending kind of ruined it for me a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, you, how many shows can you really say that about? Right, that right. they're close as perfect as possible. But Game of Thrones. <laughs> Carry on. I just, I just said one episode of the show was wasn't that good. You Carry can't. On. The whole season of Game of Thrones was. Carry trash. on, the goddess. Anyway, guys, so I was reading a GQ interview on Donald Glover, and this is a really interesting topic. This is not where you think I'm gonna take this, but I'm gonna read a, a quote from him, and I wanna get your thoughts on this, and then I'll give my thoughts. Okay. And it says, as sweet as the opportunities Glover had after Atlanta were, he is also more appreciative of the doors that closed leading up to the show than the ones that opened. Mm -hmm. For example, 
He auditioned to be on Saturday Night Live in 2007 and 2009 and was turned down. Quote, I dodged so many bullets, says Glover now. Quote, me being on SNL would have killed me. I got friends who made it on SNL. And at the time, I was like, damn. You know what else? Hate. You know me. I'll be hating too. But <laughs> if I got on SNL, my career wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. And he says, and thank God, says Glover. He's not particularly religious person, but, quote, thank God I didn't get some of those pilots. I wanted so desperately to be on Parks and Rec because it was the mm. cool hipster show. What was Parks and Rec? Anyway. Um, I, I watched, I've, I've tried to watch the reruns of, of Parks and Recreation. I cannot get into that show. I just, I just can't. All right, let me finish what he's saying. I am the bullet dodger. I feel like Samuel L. Jackson. I feel like Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction. Mm. That wasn't a mistake, you know. God did that, mm -hmm. right? End quote. So you know, listening to that and just digesting that, mm -hmm. there's a certain. I get a certain type of feeling about that. It's like, yeah. yo, you want something so bad. Yeah. You could tell, like, he is made yep. for SNL. Right. He's made for SNL. Yeah. Well, before before Atlanta, he's have you seen his comedy? Have you seen his comedy specials? He's kind of made for for SNL. OK. He didn't get it. And it led to something bigger, which I want to ask you, is there something that was so bad that you wanted in life? Or was there a school that you wanted to go to so bad? Was there anything professionally that you wanted so bad? It didn't happen. And you look back and you're like. Hell yeah, that's the best thing that ever happened oh, to me. I'm sure there are. I'm on the spot right now, so mm. I can't really think of it. For me, it was, I mean, for me, it was definitely med school. I think mm -hmm. the type of med school, there's multiple. Me having to apply to medical school twice was the best thing that happened to me. Mm. I was, one, really cocky, didn't have a strategy when I was applying to medical school the first time. And then I also just thought that if I got into medical school, like, like you're, I was just going to barely pass my way right. to a degree. Right. Which... I meant that, like, no matter what I did, I was always going to struggle. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's not the case, though. Right. So the first school I really wanted to go to was UMDNJ mm -hmm. because that's that's medical school that's is right cool. across the street. UMDNJ is University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. It doesn't exist anymore. It's now like Rutgers, yeah. Rutgers Medical School in Newark, New Jersey. That was literally a, just down the street from my, my high school, St. Benedict's Prep. And I would take the 25 and pass that school all the time, night and day. And I really wanted to go there. I did a summer program there, and I was devastated when I didn't go and get in there. That was like the first school to reject me, mm -hmm. which <laughs> I'm going to be really honest, was like the first of many, right, during the mm -hmm. first time. And I look back at the, that rejection and the subsequent rejections and the devastation that I had. Man, your boy really wasn't mature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for it. And, you know, you asked me at that point, I'm really upset about that. I was really tight about it. Yeah. Really upset about it. To the point where, you remember I told you, like, I I was doing this so alone. <laughs> I wasn't talking to anybody with any type of knowledge to mm -hmm. get the idea, like, okay, I'm not getting into schools or I'm getting waitlisted here. Or, you know, for example, I got this, uh, I got rejected from Georgetown, but got accepted into their post -back program. Right. Right. And I was like, what, what's this? To be honest, I didn't even know what you a post back Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even know, know what a postback program, but it was one of those programs that back then. You didn't know then, what a postback program if was. If you did well enough, yeah. they would let you into the school. Man, I was like, "What is this, man?" I remember being right next to the sub shop. I was like, man, "I ripped this. I put in the trash." I got a student in that program right now, <laughs> and she's yeah. rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> that is it still automatic entry if you do well or something like that. Or? Um, yeah, I think they still have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. your boy, your boy wasn't talking to anybody. Right. right? I was on an island. Right. And, uh, you know, I look back and but see, the, but during those two years afterwards, I had to learn to fend for myself. I had to learn to, you know, kind of look back and do self critique, had to learn how to become a better student. Got humbled. I got humbled. But I mean, there's humbled and you just fold and go home or there's humble. And you're like, all right, I'm ready for more mm -hmm. and I'm going to do better. and I'm going to get better. And I still really wasn't talking to that many people. But I really knew and I had to look back and say, OK, look, my essay wasn't the greatest. I need to expand here. My applications the schools that I'm applying to, I just need to be a little bit more strategic with that. Yeah. It made me hungry. It made me really, really hungry. Mm -hmm. And it made me come into med school with a chip on my shoulder. And I was like, you know, I'm coming in. I'm rocking everything. I'm not going to take yeah. a backseat to anything. And that was, to me, those doors closing was the best thing that happened to me. I also don't think that I would be like we would have never met. Correct. Right? I was waiting for that. Oh, come on. 
right? I gotta get a little sentimental, a little sentimental, a little senti senti. <laughs> Look at you, right? <laughs> oh you lord! St- you still pull the wool over my eyes, though, with my kids, though. What does that mean? Then my kid. No, I'm just. We <laughs> 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 um, just guys. Comedy, oh my God. Next on fraternity court. <laughs> comedy style. <laughs> Doctor D and Doctor Renee. But I think about those things. Like, we would have never met. Yep. I would have never got involved in some of the student organizations, possibly, mm-hmm. or at least taken a leadership role. Yeah. Probably would have never went to a school, or I would have never considered doing an MBA. Mm-hmm. Would have never kind of started this whole doc outside the box. Mm-hmm. You start to look at all these different things, yeah. and you're just like, yeah, there's a reason why certain times... I'm not saying I believe in, like, an existential type of... Destiny. But Or maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> Right, but I'm just saying. Whatever for it me, is, whether you believe it or not, this something is happening. Well, I bought I bought you enough time, so you bought me enough. Yeah. Well, I think my I think my experience is very similar to yours, right? That you know. But you applied to school once, though. I did apply to school once, but don't forget, you were like 50 when you got in. Get out of here! Oh, but I was 27 when I got into medical school, and that was not supposed to be the plan, right? Because by 27, actually. I should have already graduated from medical school and been in residency. That that was the plan. And so it didn't happen that way, you know. And um, I think about the experiences that I had during the years, you know, during my gap years, you know, as they call them. I hate the I hate that term gap years, but um, I'd like to say experiential years <laughs> because that's what it did for me. It gave me a lot of experience with figuring a lot of different things. Figuring blank out years. Blank out years. Blank like. Oh, uh, figuring shit out yeah, years. Yeah, figuring your shit out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I mean, I feel like it's it was the same thing for me, right? I felt like I was able to be a, be an adult finally. Right. You know how I was saying the thing about, you know, someone always giving you an opportunity and you always feel like you get an opportunity. For me, I I kind of um, liken that to being a child. Right. Where your parent is always telling you what to do. Right. It's very regimented. You go to school. Your parents tell you got to go to school. So you keep going to school. And then the school tells you, you got to show up here. Someone is always telling you it's all it's all mapped out for you residency it's all mapped out for you You have to show up on this day at this time in order to get this reward everything is you know leading up to a graduation right you graduate from preschool you graduate from kindergarten you graduate from middle school you graduate from like you keep just graduating right so you never get out of this um you know you never get out of this loop of being a child but you're an adult now you know and so i think i got out of that I got out of that loop, right, when I ended up taking those gap years. And I was like, oh, so now I just got to be an adult and go to work. Um, And so that, for me, helped me to have a very different mindset than I think I would have had had I gone to school straight out, had I gone to med school straight from college. You know, it really allowed me to be like, no, I'm I'm in charge of what I do. I, you know, I determine... You know what my life is going to look like. I determine what you know where I'm going to spend my time, and so it was very easy for me to make the decision when I got to residency, you know, and I was getting ready to graduate from residency because eventually I got back into that groove, right? But it was easy for me to be like, yeah, I'm not going to just take no job, you know, I'm I'm not just gonna take a job. I'm going to find something else to do or, you know, I'll just do locums, you know, like, but I'm not going to go to the next thing and be told what to do again, you know, like, so that for me, I think did, it did a lot for me um, having those gap years, being able to, you know, just understand what it means to be an adult and to be on your own time. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I just I felt so like, I get that I get yeah. that quote from him. Yeah, I when I when it. I read that, that really meant something to me, and mm-hmm. obviously it elicits something from you. And I think people who are listening to the show, even if you haven't had to take a you know right. be a non traditional, could be something else. It could be something else, but mm-hmm. it's just like certain opportunities arrive, and you want them so bad, but oftentimes you may not just be ready for it. It may not just be for you. But you think about it, and like, there is absolutely no way I can see him on SNL and then afterwards creating all of the stuff that he's created. No. SNL for me, SNL's not even that type of, I don't, 
I don't know if he would have thrived on that show or not. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But it's just I can't see him going from SNL to doing all of those different things on his own or even yeah. leaving and deciding, you know, I'm going to go and create like this type of dark comedy because mm -hmm. Atlanta's not for everyone. No. Atlanta is one of those shows that no, the reason why not. I like Atlanta is it doesn't go out of its way. If you're not familiar with the culture in Atlanta, if you're not familiar with just Atlanta in general, mm -hmm. it doesn't go out of its way to ingratiate you and say, right. okay, you either, you either get it or you don't You either get it or you don't. Yeah. Which means that you have to rely on the writing to take you along. Mm -hmm. Right. So when it talks about certain scenes in certain areas of Atlanta or, you know, lemon pepper wings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like these are things that are very Atlanta based. And if you get it and if you've been there, you get it. And if mm -hmm. you don't, it's still going to make you laugh. Right. But it's not going to you off the Wikipedia why lemon pepper wings are so, you know, f are so amazing and stuff. Right. It's great. <laughs> and that's that's why I really love that show is that yeah. they've done a really good job of just, you know, focusing on the writing. Yeah. Subtlety, dark comedy, all the different innuendos that are out there and stuff um, like he, it, later on in here. It talks about, you know, why he decided to bring Liam Neeson Liam Nielsen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Liam Nielsen onto the show. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes. We're not going to get into that. He has a particular set of skills. Yeah, well, he wanted to use a little particular <laughs> set of skills on black folk. And <laughs> yeah. it was very interesting on why he decided to have him on the show, how he convinced him to come on the show, mm -hmm. and you know what coming on the show would mean in terms of him feeling sorry about those comments mm -hmm. in a different type of way. Right. I, I like that. It's just very creative. So yeah, I think I think definitely, like you said, you know, when or like you know, this whole thing, this conversation about doors closing, and you know, realizing that a closed door, you know, can can be can be your own window to something else. You know what I mean? And closing the door. And stuff. And I'm not you? being prophetic. But would you read the like the postcards and anyway, like that today? You... But speaking of speaking of like kind of closed I guess not closed doors, but things that didn't happen, it this wasn't something that we absolutely wanted to happen, but we were approached by a show um that we previously mentioned from Bravo. Um, about what? Oh, they three years, four years ago. Yeah, they they weren't going to choose us, though. Yeah, no, they and I knew that they weren't yeah. going to choose us, but we were approached by them. Our life was a little too boring back then. Well, it still is boring. It's <laughs> too it's too boring for that show. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's just not our bag. But you know, we did you know we did the interview and everything with them, and you know, I at that point I realized you know like this is just. This kind of show is just not the type of show that we would do well on. This is just not our bag. I spoke with my sister and my sister was like, nah, she's like, I just can't see you, you know, doing a show like that. And I said to her, I was like, you know, we could do a show, but we could create our own show. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what we're doing with Doctors for Hire now. So I think it allows you to be a little bit more creative to see like when this door closes, like you said, it's not for you. So what is for you? And can you create what is for you? You know? And that's what he did with Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he's doing with Swarm also and right. everything else. So he's got his own production company. Well, like I said, guys, check out the show notes and read this article. Peeper GQ. Boy, peeper boy. It's so oh, interesting. I love that peeper boy. Peeper boy. <laughs> It's 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 a great show. I love it. I love it. Alfred, you like that show? No, I think it's dope. Listen, text us if this uh, if this session or this um, discussion this discussion <laughs> segment. You know, what your thoughts are? <laughs> thoughts are. Did you have a situation where you know you wanted something so bad? There was an opportunity. There was a job. There was an application. Whatever it is that you school, wanted, uh, and you didn't get program. it. Program. You didn't get into it, but then it ended up being the best. Um, yeah, it ended up turning out to be a great opportunity later on in life for you. Yeah. Um, text us at 833-230-2860. Once again, text us at 833-230-2860 and let us know, like, yeah, was there an opportunity that you wanted so bad you never got it? And you end up looking back and you're just like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you know, like, forget that. Yep. All right, y'all. We're going to take another break. We will be right back. Hey y'all, this is Dr. Nee with Docs Outside the Box. Check out our new video reality series. Coming to the Docs Outside the Box YouTube channel 
on April 24th, 2023. I was wondering when you're gonna get back into being employed or if you're gonna get back- No, I'm not gonna go back to being employed. <laughs> okay. So Dr. Renee is looking for a new place to practice OB. Something definitely outside the box. But am I really ready for this new change in our life? Something we talked about a long time ago, but we never actually went back to. Are you certain? Like or do I need to tell her to pump the brakes? I'm not confronted. She threw me off. She's using the locum story website and talking to recruiters. So how far is Dr. Renee going to take this? I have three options that I'm looking at. Are you serious? Yeah. Doctors for hire. If this doesn't work out or if it becomes a disaster, then I'm, I'm going to feel pretty bad about it. Coming to the Docs Outside the Box YouTube channel, April 24th, 2023. All right, we are back again. Listen, let me preface this. This show is an American children's television show staple. Um, maybe for some of the younger people listening, they don't know what we're talking about. No, but the younger people are not going to know what we're talking about. Man, this, this you, even millennials are not going to know what we're talking some, about. Some might. but uh, No, this is no. Millennials are not going to know this. Well, this show went from 1953 to 1994. It was targeted yeah. towards preschoolers, so kids who were five years or younger. Yeah. When I grew up watching this, this was on, was this on PBS? Or, no, this was on Channel 9. Channel 9, which was, yeah. I forgot what it was at the time. It was Channel 9 or Channel 11. We talking about Romper Room. And y'all, yeah. let me tell you something right now. Romper Room was a great show when I was Mom growing up. Dumpity, romper Room. <laughs> so at the end of the show... Right, so the show goes through all of these different things that like kids would like and stuff, right? Yep. And then at the end of the show, I think her name was Miss Molly. What was her name? I forget her name. She would take a mirror, right? Mm -hmm. She would take a mirror. She called it the magic mirror or something like that. I forgot yeah. what it was. The magic mirror or something like that. And she would take this mirror and like she would say she can see people through TV. See kids. See kids through TV. Kids and she'd, watching. And she would like, you know, hi, I see blah, blah, blah. I see Sam. I Which see, is really just not culturally inclusive. I see Nate. <laughs> I see Renee. I see, you know, Leah and Sam. <laughs> you know, I see, what do you call it? All of these different. She see Jamar. She see all these American see names Jamar. and stuff. And I would just sit there like. <laughs> When she gonna say me? When she gonna say me? I see me, me Daku. I see when she gonna see me. For years, I would be like sitting there watching this show, like religiously. Like she one day, like I, mean, I seriously thought, like maybe like my parents wrote in or something like that. And I'd be like, Yo, when she gonna say me? When she gonna say me? And she that day never came by. Mm -mm. That day never came. No, nope. she seen me. I think she seen many Renees. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. You know, talking about an opportunity passing us by. And I was hurt by that, you know? like, how she, But listen, how she gonna know, right? Like me. Like, how, she gonna know. But for real, like, I'm joking around, but I'm also not joking around. For a five-year-old who has a name, Nee, is like, yo, man, like, I want my name to be said on TV. Right. And she never said it. And I was like, all right, whatever. That's okay. That's all right. So as an opportunity to kind of, as an opportunity closed for me when I was five years old or where, how there you the go. show was on, we're creating a new opportunity. That's right. Where we're creating Docs Outside the Box Magic Mirror. There you want, go. Call it? Is that what we want to call it? I don't know if we can take that name, but we're going to call that it. That show is not in existence anymore. They're not going to sue us. <laughs> and nobody listens to this podcast anyway, right? <laughs> Except for Jamar and Leah and Sam. <laughs> Leah and Sam and Dr. Love <laughs> and, Dr. and Alfred. <laughs> Who else listens to this show? And Alfred. Text us at right now at 833-230-2860. Text us and let us know. Yeah, text us the word podcast. So, <laughs> let's have a little bit of a video transition, Alfred. You want to pull out something and do your little magic mirror since you want to do it? I don't have a mirror. Use your hands. Okay, Alfred, put a mirror in my hand, please. Put a mirror in my hand, Alfred. Okay. There we go. There you go. There so tell you all go. the people. There yeah, you go. What are you looking for right now? Ooh, I see, I see, I see Dr. Milhouse. Yay! <laughs> Fenwell <Dr>. Milhouse. <laughs> yo, we see you, yo. That's how it really should have went. We see you, Dr. Milhouse. We see what you're doing, yo. So if y'all don't know, Dr. Milhouse is a urologist. I forget where she's at. I don't know where she's at. Somewhere in the United States. She's doing great things. Um, but she has her own TV show on TLC. Mm -hmm. It's called Dr. Down Below. I watch her. 
her TikToks and her uh, Instagram reels, which are really funny. Yeah. Um, obviously talking about what's going on, you know, in those crazy spaces for men. Um, I think she also does women also. Mm -hmm. She um, does. But April 5th, she's got a show on TLC called Doctor Down Below. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're pretty excited about it. Actually, it's today. Yeah, that's right. That's well, we're recording. not when this show comes out. We're right. recording the show on April 5th. But, but as we're recording, yeah. So, that's, so congratulations to her. That is excellent. And, you know, so there's a lot of shows that are about doctors and stuff. And I think sometimes some people want to know, like, why is it that doctors are taking these type of shows? Why are they on social media? Mm -hmm. Why are they deciding to kind of just do things differently? Yeah. And oftentimes I think what you see on Reddit, <laughs> what you see on Twitter, some people or a lot of people think that, you know, when you are – doing well social media wise you become a little bit almost like a pain in the ass to deal with mm. in person mm -hmm. right and a lot of times people tend to or a lot of people say oh that person is just a social media person so they try to marginalize that right, person right but right. like a lot of times I, you, you sometimes got to think about well why is, is this person you know on social media talking about these things mm -hmm. you know why are we here and I think a lot of times it has to do with there's just something from a clinical standpoint that you're just not getting. Right. Mm -hmm. There's something there's a void that you feel like you need to fill. Yeah. Whether it's getting information to the public in right. a way that you think, um, you know, you think the public can receive mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Or just in general, you just want to kind of separate yourself from the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these white coats don't even have your name on it sometimes. It just has the doctor, or excuse me, it just has like the hospital name on it. Yeah. Or your name is really small and you just want to develop yourself more of a brand. You want to brand yourself. You want to brand yourself and give As yourself you've a big worked, deal. You've worked so hard to get all of that knowledge. Why not? Why not use it to your own advantage in the way that you want to? So absolutely. Good for her. Yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Milhaus, if you're watching this, if you see this, shout out to you. We give we you props on that. You. you know what I'm saying? Maybe you come on the show, Docs Outside the Box, <laughs> come talk about, you know, what's going on. And what's going Dr. on down below? What's going on down below? <laughs> you know? But shout out to you. Yep. Right. I think I see somebody else. Oh, you gotta, come on, you got to do the thing, man. Come on. Yeah, thing, man. come on, Alfred. Put the mirror in my hand. Put the mirror in my hand. I see, I see Dr. Derek Burgess. <laughs> So, Dr. Derek Burgess, shout out to you. What's good? You're doing great things. So, Dr. Derek Burgess is an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I think he graduated our year from med school, 2006. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. He's a veteran, just like we are. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Orthopedic surgeon in Mississippi. He I thought has, he was a youngin. He has now, well, I mean, com you compared to... Okay, you know what, me? Cougar over here. Get out of here. So, <laughs> Dr. Burgess just celebrated his 100th podcast episode yay and y'all don't know but dr burgess took my 10 steps to podcasting course mm -hmm. and then he kind of just took it to another level rocking and it and he is killing it he is like a year and a half in 100 episodes he's got a great podcast um it is dope what's his podcast called time out with the sports doctor yeah Time out with the yeah. sports doctor. That's Time out right. with the sports doctor. And he talks about everything. It's not about it's about sports, but it's not about sports. It's about the lessons that we can learn in sports. It's about the lessons that you can learn in your career trajectory mm -hmm. using some sports terminology. But mainly he's interviewing people who've done some really interesting things in their lives, in mm -hmm. their career. A lot of it is great. Some of it is things like, you know, they got turned down for an opportunity early in life and they were able to turn that and flip that into something major. Yeah. And it's just keys that people who are in their what's the word i want to use people who are um you know y young teenagers or even older teenagers mm -hmm. or even people who are a little bit slightly older than that yeah. can figure out what to do and take this advice and really make some smart decisions with themselves nice. so nice. shout out to you dr Derek burgess we congratulations you. on your 100th episode yes consistency is key now everybody if there's someone who you think we should put on our own docs outside the box romper room magic window mirror, yeah, or whatever you want right. to call it text us at 833 yeah we'll come up with an, an official name at some point yeah text yeah. us at 833-230-2860 we joke but we don't joke but for real like you know this mm -hmm. was something that we really always wanted to do which is kind of shout out some doctors who are doing some really amazing yeah. things there's a lot of doctors doing things so i'm sure we can be able to do multiple segments with this we can't do everybody's gonna take forever but right if there's someone who you think should be on there come and text us and let us know mm -hmm. what you think yes and if you have a name like me daku <laughs> let us know still so we scarred. can say your name still scarred 
<laughs> As a matter of fact, let's take a break. Yeah, we're going on our last topic, which is money. Let's take a break because I'm already pissed about this anyway. <laughs> Hold up. Before we continue to all my day ones, and you know each and every one of you who you are, thank you for rolling with the show from Jump. And to the new listeners, welcome. What's good? Where y'all been? I want y'all to stay a while. All right. So look, I'm trying to build a community here and I need your help. So with whatever app you're listening to this show right now, I want you to click the subscribe button. Then I want you to go over to Apple Podcasts and I want you to rate and review the show. And you may be asking, how does this help? The way how it helps is by helping the show to grow and rise up in the rankings so that it's easier for new people to discover the show. Now, what's in it for you is at least once a week, I'm going to be going through these reviews. I'm going to pick a lucky reviewer and I'm going to give that person an opportunity to have a 15 minute session with me where we could talk about anything from personal finance, getting your money right to just shooting the you know what about the show. So listen, remember, all I need you to do is subscribe and then rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts. Let's get on with the episode. Peace. All right, we are back on our last topic. This is what, four segments? This is a lot of segments. And I'm going to tell you right now, you told me you didn't want to do four segments. I got to wait up, man. You know, like you, you really took this to... And we can, this could be a whole episode right here. So I just saw this on the Twitter sphere, on the on the Twitter log. And I don't even know, tw- I don't know how many more months Twitter has left, yo. Twitter is not going to be here in a year. I'm going to put it out so? there. I don't think Twitter is going to be here. Why? Anymore. It's just not. It's just, but people so many are di- still using it. I know, but there's just so many changes that are going on. and there's, People going to still be using it. It's true. But I don't think it's going to be in the form in which we are used to using it. Right. Well, I haven't used it. Twitter in probably three years. Right. But you haven't, you may not have like interacted with it, but you probably use like, look, I look at it for news. I don't and really look at the Twitter. fact that a lot of the news sources are going to lose their blue marks. Mm. Now it's like, well, what kind of information? Oh, is they're verified? doing that now. Yeah. They're going to make people pay for it. And a lot of places are like, well, oh, I did hear that. If we yes, have to pay I for did. it, if we have to pay for it, then what's the point? Right. And I did hear that. How do you verify if it's just payment? That's really the, the thing. You verify it by cha-ching. Did you pay? Right. So <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point of this. I saw here that a company called KKR, which is a holding company, is a private equity firm. They own Envision Healthcare. Envision Healthcare is one of the popular um, physician staffing companies out there mm-hmm. um, that staffs mainly ER physicians, oh. staffs general surgeons. I think it does orthopedic surgery as well as internal medicine. But KKR, which owns Envision Healthcare, is in lender talks after missing earnings deadline. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. That means they in trouble, right? So they have not hit their Uh-oh. numbers. Right. This says it's run by the private equity firm KKR in negotiations with creditors after physician staffing firm fell short of a March deadline to report its earnings, comma, triggering a technical default. The Wall Street Journal reported Wednesday. Envision has failed to disclose its fourth quarter financials by May, March 31st, leading to a technical default in its debt that the firm has only 10 days to resolve. Mm. Oof. Wait, so what day are we on now? Today's April 5th. Yes. The company is set to have signed. Let me get some water because I am thirsty. This is No, you're drinking tea now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All the tea. The company <laughs> is set to have signed non-disclosure agreements with a group of first lien lenders represented by law firm, blah, 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 according to the people. So the Nashville-based Envision is among KKR's biggest healthcare ventures. Last month, Reuters reported that the New York-based investment firm was eyeing Baxter International Biopharma Solutions business. So just and the reason why I think this is important is two things. I'm very familiar with Envision Healthcare. Mm-hmm. I've never worked for well, technically I did, but in a very like proxy type way. Okay. Um, but I just got finished watching this special on PBS. I'm gonna put it on the on in the show notes. Um it's a it's by Frontline. Okay. All right. So Frontline is like they work with PBS and they create a whole bunch of different mm-hmm. documentaries and so forth. But yeah. this documentary that they just put out is called Easy Money or something like that. Or um, I forget the name of it, but I'll put the link in there. But it talks about from 2008 up until or 2007 up until now, like 2023. Mm. And it, it starts with SVB collapsing. 
And then it takes the steps all the way back as to that, that Silicon Valley bank. For correct. Correct. And it goes all the way back to 2007 and it chronicles and it has so many people who used to work at the Federal Reserve, people who still work at the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and some of the decisions that they made and how the Fed Reserve has pumped so much money <laughs> into the economy. Mm -hmm. And but, you know, the money has only gone to like like maybe a half a percent. You know, not even it hasn't gotten to Main Street, hasn't gotten to the majority of people. <laughs> and as a result, um, guys, I'm paraphrasing, but I saw. But as a result, there's just people who have like exorbitant amount of money. They don't even know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right. They can give it to me. They can give it to you. We would take that happily. <laughs> but because all of this money is out there. Right. And as a result, you know, what happened with covid like mm -hmm. supplies are really down as a result, demand is high mm -hmm. and now inflation is through the roof and so forth. It is crazy. So like you look at everything that's going on in the world right now and a lot of people have no clue why it's going on. Like even with sports, right? College sports, you're looking at college athletes or college uh, coaches who are getting paid like eight figure deals, you know, like crazy amounts of money. Right. And you don't know why. And it's like because the boosters have been getting money in this form or fashion from private equity firms, from all mm -hmm. of these different things. They have nothing. They don't know what to do with this money. They're just putting money into college, you know, athletics. Mm -hmm. The same thing with cryptocurrency, right? People have all this money. They don't know what to do with it. So they're just pumping into crypto, you know, like in, in these pump and dump schemes. And then all, some of these private equity companies that normally would, you know, invest in a very traditional way, they decided to jump into healthcare because healthcare is a way to make right. some money. We can flip right. money and go from there, right? So KKR is one of those companies that's like, look, we're going to jump into medicine and jump into healthcare and start doing this. For me, you know, with Envision, Envision, you know, it's kind of similar like Team Health and all mm -hmm. these different things. Mm -hmm. And, you know... <laughs> When I hear something like this, I get very wary about capitalism, consumerism in healthcare, yep. particularly when it involves people's lives, particularly when it involves doctors and healthcare providers, because, you know, you try to widget. It's easy to widgetize, you know, what goes into this Google Pixel 7, right? right? It's very easy to widgetize it. Like you need, you know, so many amount of glass screens. You mm -hmm. need like the glass screen doesn't have feelings. The glass screen doesn't have any of these things. Right. But when you try to widgetize a doctor's life or their career or their patients or their patients, like, that's very difficult, mm -hmm. right? So how do you, when you do that, I just think that you're going to get catastrophic or non-ideal type of solutions or or um, situations, scenarios that occur. And it, the sustainability, to me, is not long-term. Mm -hmm. It's triggered a lot of different malcontent among providers, uh, malcontent with nurses. Yeah. To some extent, you have some nurses who are striking because of just in general, like this whole system is just right. non-sustainable. Then we have a, a Dr. X, a Dr. X file. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Several right? years ago. Several years ago. I got to find that episode. Yeah. Two or three years, or ago, three we years had, ago, we had an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. He came on a show, talked as Dr. X, and he ended up leaving his private practice, which was paying him Boku bucks. But that changed over time because... That, private equity firm. Yeah, a private equity firm came in, bought that that uh, private practice, mm -hmm. put in a certain amount of money. And when these private equity firms buy the company or buy your private practice, they want a certain return on investment. Right. And that has to be guaranteed no matter what. Right. And whether you see more patients or you see less patients, it doesn't matter. Right. That same amount of profit has to go back to that private equity firm. So you either, it got to come from somewhere. And the process is you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, squeeze the and doctor. squeeze. You either squeeze salaries of the doctors or you make them take more call or you squeeze salaries of the people who work, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, you know, some of the support staff, mm -hmm. whatever it is, they get in their money. Somebody getting squoze. <laughs> <laughs> spell that, Alfred. Squoze? Put that on there. Squoze. Squoze. How do you spell that? I don't know. Alfred gonna spell it. Squoze. Is that S Q W? Squoze. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very I'm very interested in this and so yeah. you know I brought up the concept of me like working for them very quick like I didn't have a bad experience with them it was very quick and easy but you know a lot of these companies like this will say you know come on doc like you know leave your permanent job your employed job and come work for us and you can enjoy life as a locums. You can enjoy mm -hmm. life as, you know, kind of with some independence. But what people don't know is actually when you work in this job, you're 
you're basically employed. Right. Right. These right. type of staffing companies, these aren't really locums. These are almost employed per diem type yeah, companies. Where that's what they are. They pay your malpractice. They also pay for, they give you employment yeah. benefits and so forth. Yep. There's an fine. OBGYN um, equivalent to that as well. Which mm -hmm. is fine. But if you're looking to get out of one situation where you want to gain control, when you jump into some of these healthcare staffing companies that are promising certain things, mm -hmm. it may just be the same type of situation, right? right? Like you may be jumping out of a frying pan into a fire and you're right. like, yo, like I thought I had control, but, but no, no, you got to cover more shifts. And yeah. this hospital that's in rural area, we're going to send you there. But exactly. I thought I was going to hospital B. Nah, son, you go to hospital, you know, wherever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I bags. mean. You know, it's not just private. Well, private equity firms are doing that. Um, and you have like these groups. Like I said, there's an OBGYN com uh, comparative group to this as well. But, you know, I've been asked by colleagues before about what they what I think about joining one of these groups. And I'm like, that's fine. But just remember, you are a W-2. And so if you're a W-2 then that means you're employed and that your employer actually determines when and how you work. Yep. So you got to be really, really careful about that. Um, the other thing is that the hospital that we worked for previously as permanent physicians, when we were employed, you know, you got to be careful about hospital, like a hospital system doing something very similar, right? At least in terms of, you know, controlling how you work, where you work, you know, and things like that. Um, but the hospital system that we worked for previously, remember they got, so they got bought out by a big hospital system. That big hospital system has, you know, has hospitals and facilities and clinics all over Pennsylvania. And when the contract came back, remember the contract was like, oh, you work for this hospital system. And yeah. I was like, yeah, the y'all work for this hospital our system first, only. Our first contract would say we worked for this hospital. hospital. And then the second contract that Renee got said you work for the entire system. Right. It never specifically said that hospital that she's located, that we lived, you know, mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes from. And it became a point of contention for her because yes. she was like, well, I don't know how you saw that. But yeah, because even, even my even, partners, even your partners didn't, see, didn't see that. They were nope. like, yeah, um, what are you talking about? And she was like. It doesn't say the hospital that I'm working at, which means that mm -hmm. technically you can send me to any hospital two in, hours away in this area. She didn't. Nobody believed her. And what ended up happening is, is this hospital system ended up coalescing mm -hmm. um, OB centers and they started closing OB centers and one facility, another OB center and another facility got closed. So then possibly the place that she wanted to practice, there's no OB there. And then you may have to travel an hour mm -hmm. and a half to go to another place just to work. Right. And that did happen, not with our hospital, but there was a hospital about 40 minutes away from us that they had essentially taken over as well. They closed down the OB unit. Those doctors had to then travel 40 minutes from where they live to our hospital in order to take calls. Yeah. And so nobody believed it until it started happening. And I was like, this is why you don't just sign a contract blindly thinking eh, it's going to be the same thing. You have to be very, very concerned. So what happened after you signed a contract? I didn't sign that contract. <laughs> I left the hospital. Yeah. But yeah. you have to be very concerned. Right. When you're when you're looking at private equity firms, you know, when you're looking at, you know, pretty much any any employer that you're going to work for, you need to kind of think about their motivations as well. Right. And the things that they potentially may have control over that you're not really thinking is a big deal. Yeah. You need to take the emotion out of it. Right. And you need to be very clear with right. what you want. You need to know what your negotiables are. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you are, what your non-negotiables are. Yeah. If you don't want to travel, then you have to be very clear. And if they are not willing to play ball in that, then you need to be able to figure out, do I want to walk away from this or do I want to play? Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm just going to play for a year, two years or maybe three years. Right. And then kind of reassess and then decide that you're going to go someplace else. Yeah. All of these things are very, you know, you have to be very, very intentional when you're working mm -hmm. with these facilities, with these institutions, with these companies, with these corporations, because they look at you like a one or a zero. Mm -hmm. And as a result, like there is no room for your wants or your wishes. Like right. you can't numerate, you can't numerate that. You're standardized. Unless, unless you put it on paper. Yeah. That may be good, that may be bad, but you just need to know the game that you're playing, guys. Right. 
That's You're all. standardized, just like they always say. This is the standard contract. I will be know? paying attention to this because this is going to be very, very, very yeah, interesting. That is that is pretty interesting to see what's going to happen because um, that's a pretty big company. Oh yeah, well that's at a least pretty big firm. They they are. Let's just say they are. Um, People know who they are, mm-hmm. at least in surgery. People know yeah. who they are. So whenever you go to any major mm-hmm. conference, they're there at you know most of the booths, booths and so forth. So it's very interesting, man. So, so that, if that, they close, then what? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm sure that the their workers will probably end up going to you know other firms and so forth. Mm. I don't know what that means, but yeah, or they'll just they'll just get uh, taken over by another firm. If you got stocks in them, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's why I say VTI. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> but anyway, the notes or the link to that article is going to be in the show notes. I got that from SeekingAlpha.com. Um, but very interesting topic. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the end of our our segment. That's the end of our show. Yeah. We done. We talked about a lot of things. I we, think we packed a little too much in this show. What do nah, you think? No, I don't think so. I think every now and then, I think they're ready for it. Every now and then it's good to kind of have <laughs> you, a really good can conversation. Can you handle this? Can you handle it, right? <laughs> so once again, guys, we will catch you guys on the next episode of Docs Outside the Box. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. Thank you for everybody, once again, who listens to us on the audio component on the podcast. But also, listen, shout out to everybody who's watching us on YouTube. If you want to take a chance, check out Docs for Hire. Um, not take a chance. Check out our, our Docs Outside Everyone the Box take a chance. <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> and there you will find Docs for Hire, our video series there. And also you'll also find these video versions of our YouTube or of our podcast, which I think you guys will really enjoy and be um, entertained by. Yeah. So for you audio listeners, the next um, few episodes are going to be our Doctors for Hire series. So if you want to take a listen, um, just you know, tune in like you normally do. So. All right, y'all. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. Peace.